All right, the paper is, um, talks about current and potential oscillations for reduction reactions on platinum electrodes with an acid solution containing high concentration hydrogen peroxide. I thought this was initially interesting because of the fact that they're using both constant potential methods to study this and also constant current methods to study this. And so we thought we could uh, spend a little time talking about that. Are there any uh, questions people had initially on the, the paper? You understand the, anybody understand the, what's, what are they, what are they trying to do here? I mean, what's the point of this paper? Anybody have an idea about that? The mechanism of hydrogen peroxide reduction and platinum electrodes? Yeah. So that's a that's a something that we they're looking at. What's the any, any concept of why they'd be interested in particular on the mechanism hydrogen peroxide reduction? So maybe to construct a sensor for hydrogen peroxide. Mm. They said it, they said it is important for. Deve development of new type devices or or understanding of various function of biological system. I don't know if hydrogen peroxide is important for biological systems. Well, yeah, it actually is. You make um, a lot of biological processes make hydrogen peroxide as an enzymatic product, um, and so your body has enzymes that chew up hydrogen peroxide as part of the system. Of course, we don't have platinum electrodes in our body to do that for us. So, so I'm not sure why that, how that would directly relate to, to what we're talking about here. But yes, yeah, sensors would be one possible thing, although they're using quite a lot of uh, hydrogen peroxide, so typically way more than you would normally be interested in sensing directly. I think, um, and also, uh, if you look at, if you look at uh, the, where they're publishing from, you get a lot, often you can get an idea of what they're interested in. They're in a graduate school, Department of Chemistry Graduate School of Engineering Science. So they're in a kind of an engineering department, more so than chemistry department, I would say. And they're looking at photoenergetics of organic materials. So they're they're interested in hydrogen peroxide as a as a material that is an energetic material. Uh, you might remember that's used in some sort of uh, rockets, things like that. And uh, so they're probably interested in storing it and the stability of the material under storage is a, is kind of an underlying theme for some of these things. Uh, so they're interested in all aspects of the hydrogen peroxide reaction with metals and, and storage and so on. That's kind of what, probably what initially invest, er, in, initially interested them in the process. What particular, in this particular paper, are they looking at? What's the, what are they really keying on as, a, as something to look at? What's the really important part of the paper? I spent the whole paper talking about it. The two oscillations? Yeah. All right. The oscillations, the oscillating chemical reaction that they, they've got there. And um, what, what oscillations are they talking about? There's two oscillations. They, they're, they're talking about oscillation A and B. What, what's oscillating here? What's the reaction? Oscillate, what, uh, what reaction is it? How are they doing? Uh, and hydrogen right. 
so they got uh, peroxide reduction. and uh, proton reduction occurring simultaneously. In any oscillatory chemical system, we need to have some, some sort of coupled reactions. We can't have a single simple reaction and get an oscillation process occurring. So we need to have a, a coupling between these two processes. Now why, you know, what are they, What's, why does it oscillate? What's the mechanism for the oscillation? Why is there some, when does it, you know, it oscillates between two currents and it oscillates between two potentials when they did these experiments. And the peroxide concentration of time. Right. What happens when the peroxide concentration is high? There is a competition between hydrogen peroxide reduction and hydrogen absorption in the surface of the platinum electrode. Right. When the hydrogen peroxide concentration is high, um, well, it competes with hydrogen absorption. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's take a look at uh, one of the, let's look at some of the curves. I guess if we look at uh, curve uh, seven. Yes, curve uh, seven shows uh, A and B, two different uh, let's see what's, oh, the A and B show two different uh, acids essentially, and C is, the, is a, a situation where we have a constant current mode of operation and A and B are constant potential. All right. So you see an oscillation and you see as you scan more negative, um, I guess in B it's easier to see, as you scan more negative and you get to about minus one volt, you see oscillations in the potential or in the current increasing and decreasing. Wouldn't, it goes from a higher current to a lower current. What's the higher current signal? What's happening when you have, what did they say was happening when the high current was flowing? Peroxide reduction starts. Well, yeah, they, they talk about I guess if you go back, when you have very, they talk about gas evolution. It says vigorous gas evolution was observed on the negative potential side of the oscillation. Also they talk about Vigorous gas evolution is observed in the low current uh, state. So in this case, on number B, the higher current state, they didn't see any gas evolution, but in the low current state, they saw gas evolution. If you look at the current mode and then, you know, notice what they're doing in C is they're applying a constant current sweep. They're up changing the current constantly, increasing the amount of current flowing at each time, and then observing the potential. And they said when they did that, that they got, let's see, they said they had uh, vigorous gas evolution was observed on the negative potential side of the oscillation and not on the positive side. So when would they get gas evolution when the peroxide is being reduced or the protons are being reduced? Are being right, they're making hydrogen gas. So kind of un, you know, doesn't really, initially doesn't make sense that you're getting a lot of current uh, and no gas evolution and you get the lower current signal gives you lots of gas evolution. So, so what the, 
peroxide reduction occurs without gas evolution, right? So in order to oscillate, we need to have some reaction start up and then in order to keep it from continuing to go, there must be some sort of feedback effect that, that uh, slows it down somehow. So it goes and then it has to slow down, it has to have some inhibitor thing going on and then the other one has to start up and, and, and go back and forth between the two states. What inhibitory processes did they ascribe those two results and why were we seeing a shift from gas evolution to non-gas evolution and, and vice versa? Did you recognize that particular aspect of it? UPD under potential? Deposited. Well, certainly the the um, they're talking about under potential deposition of hydrogen ions or hydrogen um, radicals, or atoms, I should say, right? And then once the hydrogen radicals have absorbed, what does that do to the peroxide? Surface coverage of the right, and then why, why does then, as you go negative, all of a sudden, as you continue to go negative, why does the, you start to shift to a situation where there is a lot of peroxide being reduced rather than, because you're saying that the hydrogen atoms are being absorbed is stopping the reaction, but in fact, as you go negative, all of a sudden, According to what they see with the oscillations, the peroxide reduction starts to pick up, whereas the proton reduction drops off. What's, what has happened there? What's, what do they ascribe that to? They have initially a surface that's covered with the hydrogen, which suppresses the peroxide reduction. But as they continue to go negative, eventually that peroxide reduction goes, doesn't it? It has to because the, because the way they see it, they don't see the, they see a drop off in the gas evolution, which means the peroxide reduction has to be occurring. Why does why is that happening? What's what's the what's the reason why peroxide would all of a sudden start to be reduced? Well, they say that um, the oxidation reduction potential of hydrogen peroxide is very positive compared to the negative value that we are making the electrode. Mm -hmm. So we are creating unstable conditions for hydrogen peroxide reduction. And since the hydrogen peroxide concentration is high at the surface, mm -hmm. um, suddenly we're going to have hydrogen peroxide reduction. Yeah. And he mentions that, that the reduction on the back end side, sides of the platinum in presence of the full coverage or the high coverage of the hydrogen peroxide of the hydrogen will be more more active or more efficient than for hydrogen peroxide alone? Yeah. Under diffusion limit current? Okay, well, there's unstable conditions, so why, why does that? So then it, then you'd suspect, okay, all, all of a sudden we get all this peroxide reduction, then why does it stop? And then eventually it oscillates back. What's happening to oscillate it back to the... Well, the it can diffusion limit. So now the concentration at the surface is very low because it got diffusion limited. And now we have the hydrogen, high concentration of hydrogen in the surface. So we got the reduction of hydrogen peroxide again um, eliminated by absorption of hydrogen mm -hmm. at the surface. And it starts back and forth and right. that's why the oscillation. Right, so you get a, the, um, as the 
the hydrogen, the hydrogen peroxide really doesn't build up to any concentration, it just gets to the bulk essentially, but the, the, the potential for the hydrogen peroxide reduction is always very high, there's a very high energy for that process. So as soon as it goes, it's gonna go as fast as it possibly can go based on mass transport limitations. And so the, it, then it decays slowly, or because the, you use up all, you get a depletion layer of the hydrogen peroxide near the electrode surface, right? So you, you can think of it kind of as um, the reduction potential, let's say, of, uh, a, a water tower or something like that, where you've got you've got a a little bit of ma clogging material that sits in the pipe and it comes in and it clogs up the pipe just a little bit. So as you put water constantly in the big reservoir, it gets filled up until it all of a sudden breaks through the clog and all of it goes in a rush. Now you still have the peroxide coming in from the back, but at a low rate, you know, so it's gonna eventually fill up the depletion layer and then go in a rush and, and then and drop through again. So you're, you're building up and then dropping, building up and dropping, and the force for that is the potential that you've applied that makes the water wanna rush out of the thing or the peroxide all of a sudden get depleted. And the other part of it is the, the protons being there absorbed strongly on the electrode surface, acting as these little clogs to prevent the reaction from occurring until you get to enough pressure in the well or the, the water tower to, to block through, to drop through. Um, I, their explanation is pretty qualitative, a kind of a hand-waving argument, or you'd say it, it's, they're just trying to explain it. What other evidence did they see that would tend to support that basic argument? Does anybody else remember seeing anything else that would suggest that their argument is correct or at least supports their argument? What would, what would you think would change that condition from oscillating to non-oscillating if that reaction was, if that sort of process was taking place? You got a, yeah, the stirring would definitely have an effect. Why would it have an effect? Well, because now the concentration of hydrogen peroxide at the surface is constant. Yeah, it's more constant than it was before. You don't have this possibility of getting a depletion layer now, right? You, uh, instead of it all rushing out in a, it's essentially having instead of a slow pump back to the top of the water tower, now you've got a bigger pump. So it never, you, you don't have this change in the, abrupt changes in the water levels in the, in the top of the water tower. It's always going through at a fairly constant rate. So did they see effects of stirring in this thing? So the stirring does have, did seem to have an effect and it does support their argument, although that doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Um, so that's, a, that's kind of interesting. Any other questions people had about it? And then this, this type of behavior would happen with any other species that have a much uh, positive oxidation reduction potential compared to hydrogen. I mean, oh, yeah, you'd, you'd expect that to be true. Um, they do have to kind of uh, walk around the, the initial metastability, why does it all of a sudden go? I mean, why does all of a hydrogen peroxide all of a sudden decide to be reduced all at once? There's not, you know, you kind of have a switch. Okay, all of a sudden the switch is on, everything goes. And then it, as soon as the rate of reaction of hydrogen peroxide reduction slows down, then the switch gets thrown back and then it builds up again and goes. So there is some metastability questions they haven't answered. Why does that go from a metastable state to, a, to the reaction? Um, but yeah, I would think that other sorts of systems would ha expect, experience a similar, a similar result. This, you see these sorts of oscillatory behavior for other sorts of, especially for corrosion systems where you, you build up a, um, a passive layer that blocks the electron transfer reaction and then 
you get enough potential for the reaction to go. It's sort of, as it goes, it basically removes the passive layer until you decrease the local concentration or you cause some, what they call concentration polarization. You deplete the local concentrations or you build up. The other thing is you build up a large amount of uh, ions in the solution, changing the equilibrium for that process. The reaction slows down, the passive layer regrows, and then it, and then it uh, stuff diffuses away. You get the same sort of behavior again and again. So you do see uh, passive layer type oscillations for iron and for stainless steel, for gold electrodes and, coal, co and chloride solutions, lots of systems. And it's a, basically the same idea. You get a, a passivation sort of break that, breakthrough, passivation breakthrough. So, um, as far as I know, I, I, uh, you're probably right. They probably would expect it to see a similar behavior for other uh, species like hydrogen peroxide that has a positive reduction potential, but they haven't addressed that yet. I would think. Uh, Hydroquinone would be a, something like hydrogen peroxide. It's easy to oxidize or easy to, or quinone is easy to re reduce. You might also do that. Um, but a lot of these things ex depend on being kind of just, just about right, you know, so maybe the potentials are not quite right for other species. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's quit here. We're out of time.